If you work in the creative industry, then episode 97 of IP series with Rita is for you. And with that, I welcome you to today's episode. My name is Rita Amri Chinda. I am an intellectual property lawyer and information technology lawyer based in River State and uh, an arbitrator as well and a Rotarian. Don't need that from example. Yeah, I just have to put it out there. But well, welcome to my podcast where I talk about recent cases and development on copyright, trademark, patent, industrial design, trade secrets, fund variety, and geographical education. Now, if you haven't listened to the previous episode where I talked about the Domitila case, Edge of Pep, his sister, listen to it, eh? Or listen to all the 96 episodes, it will make my day. Share, like, subscribe as well. For my tiny listeners, you guys already know the drill. You are the best. Now, let's dig into our review of the copyright act 2022 so last month president mohammed wari had assented to the copyright bill to repeal the copyright act of 2004 and this has been a long time coming now we will recall that last year there was a public hearing that was held um, it was a hybrid public hearing so i was able to participate virtually all the way from Port Harcourt, uh, but those who were physically present in abuja made some contributions and all of that now this law has finally been passed and we have the copyright act 2022 so and what i'm going to say is this act was well thought out. I'm going to commend everyone who participated in drafting this law. Um, it tackles issues that creatives faced in Nigeria. We're not going to talk about um, international issues as to AI-generated works. Um, this would um, uh, emanate as a result of, uh, I don't know, any other new emerging frontier or tech such as the nfts the metaverse these are not our immediate problem at the moment we have bigger issues in terms of ease of, ease of reproduction so altering um, a copyrighted work um, distribution communication to the public um, unauthorized um, use so i'm just going to go through i will first of all highlight the new provisions and then i'll give like a general review of the act they're about so it has isn't is divided into 12 parts and 109 sections while the old act was divided into four parts 41 sections and five schedules so what thing again that i noticed about this was um they kind of merged the previous so we have the copyright act and then other regulations that um you know help so that some issues such as levy on um materials, copyright levy materials, um dispute resolution mechanism, collective management organization regulations, you know, those things. So it was just kind of incorporated in certain part but um from publications and um few events I've attended that the NCC uh, was featured in they've said they're gonna come up with more regulations to um you know back this act up so yeah um let's not give so much thought to the fact that this law or this act um did not include um emerging text and new frontiers but then we have i mean with good strategy as a copyright practitioner or an intellectual property practitioner based in nigeria i'm sure you'll be able to um come up with innovative ways to help your clients when they start to experience all of these things and the commencement date for this act is 17th march 2023 now if you look at the introductory part of the act it says an act to repeal the copyright act cap c 28 laws of the federation of nigeria 2004 and enacts the copyright act 2022 to provide for the regulations protection and administration of copyright and for related matters such as performance rights um, um folklores etc now 
Section 1 states that the objective of this act is to, one, enhance the capacity of the Nigerian Copyright Commission, which I would want to, like, again, I, I want to commend the, the, the drafters. I mean, the role of the Copyright Commission was expanded. Like, you're definitely going to see, I think if you do, like, a keyword search, let's do that together. So, keyword search of commission will give you about... Oof, sorry guys, I don't know if you heard that in the background, but it will give you about 192. That's the result that comes. So you get a set when you put in the search was commission, you get 192 hits. So that tells you that the entity is willing to go the extra mile to make sure that they not just regulate or administer or enforce um compliance of this act but they are ready to engage the creative sector so if you work in the creative sector please for every time you see any publication that the nigerian corporate act is organizing an event please make sure you attend it i'm aware there's one coming up next month let me get that for you um it's a collaboration between the nigerian copyright commission and um the World Intellectual Property Organization. So it's a workshop on collective management operations and licensing organized by Nigerian Copyright Commission in, collab- in cooperation with the World Intellectual Property Organization for officials of collective management organizations, copyright authors and owners, officials of government agency, in the creative sector, and IP lawyers. Date is May 3rd to the what so it's a two-day event i have registered because i want to get all the deeds about this law i don't want anyone to say oh i'm always not prepared like i'm really impressed i think i think i'm going to keep saying that um but then again there's another um document that was published last year tied to licensing and operation manuals for collective management organizations that was it um a research work by the Nigerian Copyright Commission, the World Intellectual Property Organization, White Bull, MCSM, AVRS, and Reprong, which are like the three major strong collective management bodies right now in Nigeria. So we don't longer we don't longer use collecting society. So if I've done any interview, I think I did one last week and I kept referencing collecting society instead of you know CMOs. But yeah. That's one of the objectives of this act and it also gives the authors the right to enjoy rewards and recognition for the intellectual property. So no more, um, I mean, there's no room for anyone to be taking advantage of anyone anymore uh, because now as an author, you have the right to be recognized and acknowledged as the creator and owner of the work so the next one will be um, nigerian compliance to international copyright treaties and conventions such as the marrakesh treaty which pro- promotes awareness in accessible formats for the blind visually impaired and print disability disabled persons apologies in nigeria uh, you can find that under section 26 i'm going to talk about that as well uh, and also i was very impressed with the fact that some provisions of um, the, the copyright treaties uh, were introduced into the act. Like, I mean, you guys just said, see, Nigeria has to do better. I mean, we're exporting our copyrighted works such as music, our films, our fashion. Let's help these guys do a lot better. And also introducing these special provisions for those who are disabled was also is also commendable as well and then finally um provision for appropriate limitations and exceptions to guarantee access to creative well this is where um compulsory licenses comes into play so i'm going to talk about all of those things Section 2 now goes for that section 2 sub 1 now goes for them to introduce the list of eligible works to enjoy copyright protection and they include literary works such as 
novels, stories, poetical works, plays, stage directions, audiovisual works, sceneries, and broadcasting scripts, choreographic works, computer programs, textbooks, treaties, histories, biographies, essays, articles, encyclopedias, dictionaries, directories, anthologies, letters, reports, memoranda, lectures, no, I'm a lecturer now, so I'm really happy, uh, <laughs> addresses, sermons for those in church, I mean, I think last, I think last year or last two years, there was this, you know, conversation as to copyright protection for uh, gospel songs, I mean, not much have been said about sermons, but I think this addresses that now, um, the sermon is copyrighted, but I think that was like a given already. It's, it's a written work. So then you have lectures, addresses. Oh, I talked about that. Sorry, guys. Um, law reports, excluding decisions of court. So my legal bloggers, you guys should take take note of that. Um, written tables and compilation, including tables or compilation of data stored or embodied in a computer or any medium um yeah that's for literally literary works um let's look at musical works which will include musical compositions irrespective of musical quality so we already know that musical works um yeah two types you have the music composition that's which i already stated there and sound recording which means the fixation of a sequence of sounds capable of being perceived orally and of being reproduced but does not include a soundtrack accompanying or incorporated in an audio visual work so yeah then the next um eligible work is hold on i just want to get them the right other artistic works yeah so let's look at the definition of artistic work so i'm taking my time to go through this so we don't have um issues as to what qualifies that so when i just mentioned it in the course of the conversation you know what i'm actually referring to so artistic work will include Paintings, drawing, etchings, lithographs, woodcuts, engravings, prints, maps, plans, diagrams, work of sculpture, photographs not comprised in an audiovisual work, works of architecture in the form of building models, and works of artistic craftsmanship, including pictorial woven tissues and articles of applied hand craft. Next eligible work is audiovisual works, which used to be cinematograph works. Yeah. Um, hold on. Audio audiovisual works would mean um, the aggregate of. A series of related visual images with or without sound which is capable of being shown as a moving picture by means of a mechanical electronic or other device and irrespective of the nature of the materials on which the visual images and sound are carried and included and includes the soundtrack but does not include a broadcast so again kudos to the drafters like it's, it's not easy thinking of all the things i already defined what sound recording is and then i'm talking going to talk about the final type or eligible work for copyright protection which is broadcast so you see that in the law broadcast comes up i think a lot not so much or it's not as visible as um cmos but broadcast will mean the transmission by wireless means of sound or images or both in such a manner as to search images or sound to be received by the public then it defines broadcasting organizations to mean 
any authority established under any law in Nigeria or elsewhere providing broadcasting services for public reception. So if you work in the broadcasting um, industry, this is for you. Then let's look at the definition of choreographic work. I mean, we've had instances where someone is trying to um, lay claim to a dance because it's, it's gone viral. So under the law, choreographed works would mean the composition of movement for dancing or any other pattern, succession of gestures mostly created to accompany music. So don't say we do not have laws. We have the laws right now. We what? We have the laws that takes care of all of these things. So now what are what is the criteria for eligibility? And this can be found on the subsection two of section two. So section two, subsection two. <laughs> I hope that makes sense anyway. But yeah, so one is that effort must have been put in making the work um there must be elements of originality and uh, it must be in a fixed medium of expression presently or to be developed later to be reproduced or communicated either directly um with the aid of any machine or device and i don't i don't think okay there was no, no definition for what a machine or device would be because um in some part of the sections device was uh, mentioned but i i think maybe the regulation will clearly define that for us but if it doesn't i think that we can use that or interpret it to mean um technologies being developed presently to ease um, the use of copyrighted work whether authorized or unauthorized then it doesn't also matter the quality of the work um, so long as it meets this basic requirement, it doesn't matter the quality of the work or the purpose for which the work was created. So, um, then subsection 4 talks, oh, I already talked about that. Um, subsection 4 says, a work shall not be eligible for copyright by reason only that the making of the work or the doing of the act in relation to the work involves an infringement of copyright in some other work. What that means is this. The fact that you infringed on someone's work does not take away the fact that he has the basic elements or criteria of being in um, the fixed format, original, and effort has been put, you know, in expressing that work, um, not minding the quality as well. Then... Um, Copyright in the compilation shall not confer any exclusive right in the pre-existing material of the data. And finally, an artistic work shall not be eligible for copyright if at the time the work was made, it was intended by the author to be used as an industrial design as defined under the pattern design. So if, for instance, now... So if, for instance, you created, you have created this work. And so the, the former act has stated if it's meant for industrial um, reproduction or multiplication or all of those things, then it's not meant to be copyrighted. So design right already protects visual appearances of a design that is new. Um, whereas for copyright, we'll be talking about originality, uh, which I think new will also fall under that. But then if that and work was created to be a design work then it would not enjoy copyright um, protection that is my interpretation of that particular section so i'm going to take us to the mm. next one so remember how i talked about the expansion of the rule of um the copyright commission now let's look at um i already talked about section one sub one which um one of the major aims of NCC is, is that their power they have the power to regulate, administrate, and enforce the compliance of you know this act. Then the commission can also intervene in a situation where 
there is more than one collective management organization to receive um, royalties on behalf of performers and then they can also decide which of them should receive the royalties um, especially when it has to do with um, remuneration for broadcasting of sound recording so you can find another section 15 sub 5 then the commission can also issue certificate as proof where the country is a party to say one of the copyright treaties in nigeria is signatory to or is a member state of um that is on um on that section eight sub two um on that section 27 sub five they have the power to make regulations um like the special exception for the rec sound recording of a musical work um then section 31 sub four mandates that the commission has the right to grant um, applications for non-exclusive license to produce and publish the translation of any work in the language uh, mentioned in the application. So you know that um, copyrighted works such as literary, musical works, um, and, and audiovisual works can be translated or adapted. So one of the rights that they have to give or um, where someone applies for it is to grant them a non-exclusive license. So licensing is you giving someone authorization or consent or permission to use your work within a certain period of time in line with the terms and conditions of that licensing arrangement. Now, if you're going to do that, it has to be for the purpose of you teaching, a scholarship or research. Now, there's going to be a calculated rate for the use of the um, work in line with the standard for licenses um, and I'll refer you guys to the licensing policy for translation and reproduction of international financial reporting standard for adaptation which the Commission can reproduce by reaching out to either the IFRS to get the requirement for Nigeria to adopt this but I do not know presently if the Nigerian Copyright Commission already has a guideline or a royalty rate um, that can be used for this purpose. So maybe I also need to look out for the regulations as well. Um, they have the right to authorize a compulsory license for public interest, where reason in a situation where you have made reasonable efforts to reach out to the owner of the work to get consent, permission, authorization um, for commercial use. Um, but in that instance, man, they can waive that for you, especially in if it's like a national emergency. So that wasn't defined, but then you cannot on your own say, oh, this is a national emergency, then I just want to get a compulsory license for this, blah, 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 blah. So the commission is going to take care of all of that. They, would def they will help you in determining whether your use is um, for a national emergency. Um, so I'm going to cheat this in because I attended a a, um, a Twitter space where uh, Mr. Akman had, had made reference to an example that a national emergency, because I had to ask the question, a national emergency would be uh, in a situation where, um, so for instance, during the pandemic, um, some private schools still continue using copyright ever but those in the public school could not access all of this so that could be a uh, national emergency where um, it's for the public interest for the students so that they, they are able to learn they have access to knowledge and materials and all of those things and i think again if this is commendable for the commission and the drafters who talked about it because normally when i hear compulsory licensing i'm only thinking of um patent I've never seen a compulsory license um, provision for uh, other types of intellectual property mechanism other than patent, which is usually used for emergency situations. So in the event of a, um, a, a pandemic, you need to get access to certain um, information of the drug that will be used to um, for vaccination and all of that. So, you know, it's that detailed. Then section 49 talks about the powers of the commission on 
anti-piracy, which was re um, retained but reintroduced under subsection 5, where an offender who claims to not know that they had in their possession an anti-piracy device can prove to the um, satisfaction of the court and will be liable to a fine of at least 100,000 or imprisonment for a term of five years or both. I mean, they, they try the minimum san sanctions that I've come across in course of reading this act is, you know, impressive. I mean, we've transitioned from from the previous act to this. It's something. It's something. Um, then importation of prohibited goods or infringing copyright works. This is a collaborative effort between the NCC and the customs. Yes, and the customs. So what the law now provides is that um, once the owner of the copyrighted work has notified the Director General of NCC, he would then notify the Comptroller General of Customs or any other officer in charge of that relevant border uh, with the relevant information to identify the work, intercept it and impound it, and then permit the DG of the NCC or any person that the DG has appointed to act on his behalf to inspect the impounded work and then take custody of the work, which will be kept for um, at least 10 working days and may be, subject, may be subject to extension. You can extend it um, for another 10 working days. Then subsection 5 of um, um, 53 which talks about importation of prohibited goods or copyrighted works infringing copyrighted works says that the importer the person who imported it will be notified um, by the controller general that this action can be taken that actions can be taken um, then the notice that will be issued will not exceed five years i think it's a bit too much i mean five years for notice they will seize your thing. Ugh. I don't know, guys. I think maybe the, they should have said like at least twelve months as one year, um. But then it shall not be ex extended beyond that period for which the copyright um subsists for. So, um. I'm a, I'm not going to, I think I don't know why I like saying I'm aware. So I know I've, I've seen publications by the EU and the UK and the US um, anti-counterfeiting um, group where they work hard to make sure that um, infringing IPs, when this is I was talking about copyright now, um, do not get into the country because someone has, you know, bypassed you know, certain routes just to get those products into the country. Um, Section 55 talks about take down notice, which is like, when I saw that, I was like, oh, IP in the digital age. Yes, Nigeria, thank you for that. Now, in the event of a take down notice for an infringing content or that Section 55, the commission um, on that sub or um, can review the matter just to appease the copyright owner, especially when they're not happy with the decision or determination of the service provider. Then, in the event of a serial um, offender, someone that likes to, you know, put up infringing content, reproduce or publish or um, exploit any of the, the um, commercial bundle of exclusive rights according to a copyright owner, the Copyright Commission is the next line of appeal where um, the, service prov the service provider can reach out to NCC to uh, resolve the complaint within 10 days. So this is a form of alternative dispute resolution mechanism that the Commission is going to be participating in. And I love it for them, guys. I really do. Then Section 78 Sub 1 lists out the roles, the powers of the commission to include 
one they shall be responsible for all matters relating to copyright obviously i mean <laughs> including administration regulation and enforcement which is in line with section one top one as well they have the right to monitor and advise governments on nigerian position in relation to bilateral and multilateral agreements between nigeria and other countries love it um investigate and redress cases of infringement of copyright and settlement and set to disputes of copyright where those disputes have not been specifically reserved for settlement under this dispute. More responsibility. Please, guys, if you work with NCC, edge up, please put me in your panel of um, uh, neutral. Uh, I also have qualifications and specialty uh, as a dispute resolution practitioner. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's build let's build our dispute resolution, IP dispute resolution skills more. So I, I'm I'm volunteering my services. Um so put in a good word for me, guys. Um enlighten and inform the public on matters relating to copyright. And I'm sure they're gonna I mean with the, the level of engagement I've seen within the last few weeks, I was gonna say days, but um NCC is gonna do a lot more PR in terms of, you know engaging stakeholders i mean it's going to be taxing so if you need help as well Henri is here i would gladly love to um collaborate with the ncc to enlighten the public on matters relating to copyrights create and maintain a register and database relating to copyright work which is um nice um also provide access to documents and information relating to any copyright kept or maintained by the commission so you know the so we we you do like we used to do like a depository form of um ip registration but now with the law so there's a provision that says you may um not shall now so why you may see that is like optional it's not optional per se so in case you're thinking of, oh they did not make a composite please shall go and see register or deposit your copyrighted work because the commission will also give you a CTC in the event of a dispute just to give you an edge to show proof that you are actually the copyright owner. Um, they also provide, um, like I mentioned that, um, they are also responsible for any other matter that relates to copyright. They can um, exercise any other function or duty that may be necessary. Um, they have the powers to prosecute, to conduct or defend before a court any charge information or complaint or any proceeding arising under this act um levy such charges or fees as may be reasonable for services and facilities provided by the commission regulate and implement measures to promote protection of copyright regulate the conduct of collective management of rights love it um i think that was already in the previous um act as well but you know this is for more emphasis exercise such other powers as are incidental to or to object then the course of exercising their powers of enforcement and compliance they shall have the power to demand for evidence of compliance for um from a person um from persons public or private institutions and organizations so for if, if you have ntc coming to demand proof that you actually have um authorization please make sure you comply don't stress don't stress my guys eh? don't stress these people that are trying to make the lives of creatives better um caution a non-compliant person or entity in writing um sanction a non-compliant person or entity by the imposition of administrative fines uh, i think that will be done in collaborations with the collective management organizations such as avrs um mcsn and reprong as well so if you get such letter make sure you engage relevant bodies just to know um why you're getting such sanctions or letters and uh, you can also institute criminal proceedings against a non-compliant person or entity um, civil actions against the 14 persons or the entity obtain a court warrant or order to seize or detain any book record document or other information storage system or database which use does not confirm to the act so any authorized use they have and they get a court warrant to do that they're going to detain and seize your work and i'm happy to see all of this because i mean i follow the kenya copyright um board um activities online and i'm like oh 
we need more information so maybe more publications more actions um maybe they can also reach out to the IT community for volunteers i will always always volunteer in just a good capacity but yeah you know that is part of their work um then section 86 of sub 2 talks about appointment of copyright officers so let's see now um so copyright officers who um so who have the right to enter inspect or examine any reasonable at any reasonable time reasonable time will be between between working hours definitely any building or premises so you recall that uh, one of the powers that the ncc has is to get court warrant to do search to seize and all that so they will then work with their copyright officer who are already appointed to assist them to do all of this to arrest any person who is reasonably who they reasonably believe to have committed an offense make exam make such as initial inquiry um, demand the production of any record to be kept under section 48 uh, for inspections demand information require the person who is defining the building to give such information and then anyone who goes ahead to obstruct these copyright officers you prevent them from carrying out their work it's like um when when the police tell you any obstruction if you if you cause any obstruction to their investigation you're also be liable so make sure that you do not obstruct or hinder them or prevent them or even go as far as assaulting so um the other day my mom uh was telling me a story of how um this um, phc and that's the port harcourt electricity company um were assaulted in my in my community because they've been having some like issues so if you assault a copyright officer who is carrying out his duty um that's not going to be fun for you going forward no more no more intimidation from offenders it's like carry your dog i mean we saw a lot of that during the elections where people were trying to protect themselves but i mean that's understandable but not in this instance anyway don't do it don't do anything that will make their job difficult um so yeah they have the powers the rights and privileges of a police officer as defined under the police act or any other relevant enactment re relating to investigation and prosecution of a criminal matter uh, of a criminal matter very remember i talked about registrations of authors you can check out okay let me just save that for later okay yeah Section 85 states, 87 rather states that um, they have the right to maintain, maintain a register of work. So it reads, the commission shall establish and maintain a register of work referred to as register. The, and then any person that applies in a prescribed manner to the commission to register a work that is eligible. So anybody can apply. Um, the, the commission may also enter the particulars of the work in the register. Provided the registration was not done, um, the registration of the work does not confer copyright. Then, some forces register shall at first instance be evidence of work um, and particulars entered in the register and any extract from the register certified by the commission shall be admissible in evidence in all proceedings without further proof of production of the original of the matter. So, my dear copyright owners of literary work, musical work, artistic work, um, audiovisual works, broadcast and sound recording, even though the law states that you may register, in the event of a dispute, the, regis the registry, the, the commission will come to your aid. They'll be like your helper. They'll be like the ladder that you need to use to enter heaven. Because now it states that the certified copy that you get from the commission shall be admissible in evidence in all proceedings without further proof of or production of the original of the matter certified. So it doesn't matter if you have um, another copy in your house. The one that is being certified by the commission is what will, can be tendered in the event of a dispute. You also have the power to produce and store all or any part of a registered or electronically or any other format, which is good. I mean, we have to move from analog to the digital thinking of story i think it's just, if 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 they are seeing any other format I would, I would want to say maybe the format will also include like a blockchain 
um, registry uh, for copyrighted materials. Then they also have the, the commission may with the approval of the minister, minister make regulation for the purpose of this part. So you see, I mean, so much to do. So anyone who who knowingly makes a cost to be made, anyone who makes any false entry into the register commits an offence under this section is liable to a conviction to a fine or at least of uh, a fine of at least hundred thousand or imprisonment for a term of at least one year or both. So if in if you know that you do not own a copyrighted work, so I think what comes to mind is the copyright, the Christ, the gospel kids i talked about trying to remember so it's between rccg choir and some other guy um you guys can check that i talked about it in one of my podcasts as well so let's say in that case rccg went ahead to deposit a copy um, with the nigerian copyright commission now if you knowingly like on your own you just chest and say they go register this work as my own that you've made a false entry they, and you are liable to a fine of 100,000 naira. It might be small, but it's not small. It's going to dent your integrity, you get. Um, so, yeah. Then, section 88, sub 2, on their role to, to approving um, a collective management organization. The commission may approve a collective management organization. As long as they're satisfied that it is a company incorporated, um, a company incorporated as a limited by guarantee, its objectives are to negotiate grant copyright licenses, collect royalties on behalf of copyright owners, and distribute such royalties, represent a substantial number of copyright owners, um, and then comply with the terms and conditions prescribed by the regulation made by the commission under the act so the the regulations the cmo regulation has not been published so looking forward to seeing what um is going to be included there but i know the previous cmo regulation was very detailed with regards to um ip ownership and also i think this section also cures um a mixed reference to the coson mcsn dispute currently mcsn which is the Musical Copyright Society of Nigeria, is a recognized collecting body for musical works. Um, then Sub 6 also talks about the commission shall have the power to suspend and revoke the approval given, like the suspended customs license years ago. And they also have the right to review and approve tariff as may be determined by a CMO. So I think that might also be included in the regulations as well. So let's just, I would patiently wait for the regulation to, to know what the tariffs are. But then you can also look um, look out for the, the, the manual I had mentioned, which is the licensing and operation manual for collective management organization in Nigeria that was published last year before this law was passed then they also have the right to make regulations specifying the conditions necessary for the effective management of cmos and to give effect to the purpose of this section um so cmos approval review um, of tariffs and etc so why this is important again is that so i don't know if you guys were aware i think during the pandemic during the lockdown there were publications on i think it was a cmo in kenya or one of these african countries was accused of not being transparent and so this is where the copyright um commission or the agency the copyright board uh, would come and intervene to make sure that a cmo is doing their job and just a few days ago, um, I don't know how many of you know Sotiso. They are a Nairobi Kenyan um, band. Um, they were calling out their CMO uh, for so to them the the royalty they got was so little, and it was it became like a so he went ahead and started trolling his co. Cool, 
um, artists who are upcoming saying he wondered what one of them, um, what's his name now? Um, I'm trying to get his name, guys. Just bear with me for a minute. So, well, one of the Soti Souls band mates, Bien Amir Baraza, uh, was trolling another um, artist saying if he got 14,634 shillings, he wondered what the guy himself got. And then the band is now threatening to withdraw their membership. So, I, I think the regulations will take care of that because the previous regulation um said that what um copyright owners can do if they don't wish to be affiliated with it with a cmo anymore um section 90 talks about the powers to constitute a dispute resolution panel to resolve issues on payment of royalties um terms of licenses and any other matter and then sub five says it can make regulation for the procedure and operation of the panel so looking forward to seeing um all of those things being included it is so this is about this is like what the nigerian copyright commission is expected to do going forward so next up on my um, list for conversation is the introduction of a special exception for people that are blind, um, print disabled, visually impaired, um, you know, that those category of people referred to as beneficiary persons under our law. Now, one interesting thing I got to find out in the course of my research is that our law that makes provision for um, these beneficiaries is also enshrined on that section 31A of the UK Copyright Act. So it reads, disabled persons, copies of works for personal use, uh, making, communicating, uh, making available, distributing, or lending of assess accessible copies by authorized body. Um, so there's 31 BA as well, same thing. Then accessible and intermediate copies, records and notification, interpretation and general. So if you look at it, the definition for what is an accessible copy authorized body is also similar to what we have under section 26 um sub 7 which defines um what is an accessible format copy works authorized entity beneficiary persons um yeah and that's about it so i'm just going to take my timeline to explain each of the subsections and you know kind of link it back to the relevant provisions under the uk and given that we borrowed most of our laws from it, i think it's it's i would say it's sweet that we have to go back again to reference it but then um, these are some of the things you find out or come in contact with when you are uh, reviewing law so why is this um section really important for us in nigeria why Am I commending the drafters? So basically, um, we've joined the League of Other Countries that have made provision for um, copyright provision for blind and visually impaired people who always have difficulty in assessing copyrighted works in format that are accessible to them, such as Braille, audio, or large print. So I do recall an incident last semester while I was invigilating um master student um, in my school so we had this um visually impaired student that you know had to come take exams she had to come her own laptop that had his own um tech that would help her um be able to type her work and you know interpret what um would be read to her regarding the questions and at some point the laptop she had the battery wasn't strong and then there wasn't like there was no light 
and then she couldn't finish her exam but the lecturer was gracious enough to ask her to come the next day he would set a new question for her to be able to complete her assessment so um those are some of the, the things that this law seeks to cure to make sure that um, institutions ngos uh or authorized entity as defined under sub subsection seven um to include government institutions or non-profit organizations or recognized bodies by the government who receive financial support from government to provide education instructional training and uh, adaptive reading or reading or information access to to beneficiary persons um can be able to have access to all of this now to address this um provision the world intellectual property organization had adopted the marrakesh treaty to facilitate access to published works for persons who are blind visually impaired or otherwise print disabled this treaty creates a legal framework that allows the cross-border exchange of accessible books without the need to obtain permission and we know that when you're talking about intellectual property of any format consent permission authorization is very important but because of this uh beneficiaries certain exceptions have been put in place to make sure that they do not um, lack or access to information or um, copyrighted work and not restricted from them so it kind of gives them um, special privilege they have the special privilege to access works with and 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 jurisdiction your territory um, is not a barrier to you getting this information so member states are required to provide exceptions or limitations in their national law which nigeria has done under section 26 now um, to enable the reproduction and distribution of accessible books by authorized entities such as libraries and ngos this marrakesh treaty came into force in 2016 and then nigeria ratified it um 4th of october 2017 and that's that's april as at this month there are about 75 countries who are member states and have also you know considered putting this into their national law um this law per se or this provision um helps to um, promote right to education information and culture for people with disability and in, in addition to this, you also have other um, laws that promote access to information and culture for people with print disabilities, such as the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, the World Intellectual Property Accessible Books Consortium, and, you know, several other um, laws. So what does our, our, our law provide? Section 26 of the Copyright Act 2022 states that an authorized entity of the government okay so it says an authorized entity or government recognized entity that receives some sort of funding from the government to provide educational institutional training i think i read that in between um with the intention of not making money can without the permission of the copyright owner literary and artistic work in form of text notation or relatable related illustration make or obtain an accessible format so what is an accessible format this would be a copy of a work in an alternative form or manner that gives the beneficiary person access to use the work so for instance the braille audio um and any other any other format that would help um these beneficiaries be able to assess these works in question <coughs> whether it's also by electronic communication by wire or wireless means that is supplied to the beneficiaries supplied to the beneficiaries um exclusively and for non-profit purpose so a, a let's let's do a brief reading so section 31a of the the uk copyright act would um went as far as elaborating to say the copies are usually made for personal use so you making copies to give to them is 
so that the beneficiary or disabled person has access to either substantial part or the whole work itself um you're able to enjoy using it within your own comfort um it, it, it you're not your 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 use will not constitute an infringement and it goes far to say copyright is infringed by the transfer of an accessible work made under the section to any person other than persons so if it's given to someone that is not disabled or considered to be a beneficiary as defined under um section 26 of 7 of the nigerian copyright act to include the blind um someone that has visual impairment or per perceptual or reading disability which cannot be improved to give visual functions substantially or um, through physical disability to hold or manipulate a book or to focus or move the eyes to the extent that would be normally accepted for reading, then that will be considered to be an infringement. So you, you now have to state your purpose for wanting to reproduce, to make copies um, in that form. And I think that if someone sees you making a braille, a um, an audio version for for um this special persons or beneficiary they would definitely understand now if you if you look at sub seven of um the uk act it says in this section dealt with means sold or let for hire or offered or exposed for sale then let's let's <laughs> Um, an authorized agent or an authorized or government recognized entity um, to do certain things in Nigeria without con without consent permission authorization of the copyright when they literal artistic work um, in form of um, text or whatever then you also have um, criteria for entities who wish to explore the special exception so that we are able to the the commission is able to control who can do certain Things who can provide um, accessible formats for beneficiaries. Now, your aim must be to serve beneficiary persons. Um, distribution is limited to just beneficiaries. You also um, discourage reproduction, distribution, and making available unauthorized copies uh, and must be maintained with care. Um, the record of handling, the record of the copy must be properly documented while respecting the privacy of the beneficiary. So one thing again that I liked about the, the copyright act is um, right to privacy for beneficiaries. We don't want people being all up in their business. Oh, so now this person will carry and give no. Um, and I'm glad that the copyright act talked about that as well. Um especially now when we have issues as to um you know transfers of data um data privacy data protection you know and uh, um, the nigerian the nigerian um body um so we now have like a data protection bill which i mean i, I skimmed through it while i was preparing for one of my lectures and i would say um at this time it kind of takes care of our present data data issues so yeah categories of um, beneficiary persons according to subsection 3 states that they are allowed to make a copy of the books or the copyrighted work they have access to as long as it's for their personal use so you recall that i stated the uk copyright has specifically made provisions that um, work for disabled persons should be for personal use if it's not for personal use then it's going to be an infringement um, now if you you are a caretaker if you're a caretaker or a caregiver of a um, beneficiary you are expected to assist so just like the story i told you about this student had a a caretaker who was her sister that brought her to school but she wasn't allowed to stay with her to write the exams um, she had to come later on, you know, um, but she follows her around and all that she has sister to get um, I would say the materials she needs for, for lectures now 
the beneficiary in making copies or accessible formats must have consent to use lawful consent and lawful access to use the work um it also pro permits cross-border exchange distributing and making available assist accessible formats copies exclusively so you find out that this this license per se is exclusively for people with with disabilities that have been listed or not they are they are blind visually impaired or print disabled uh, you, they also need to take appropriate st steps to discourage the unauthorized reproduction distribution communication to the public um, um they also need to take into consideration um what the laws um provide in other jurisdictions in terms of um, accessible formats um provided that prior to the they were unaware based on the reasonable ground on the reasonable ground that it would be used by another person other than the um beneficiary so if for instance they give or make copies and it gets into the hands of someone who's not a beneficiary there must be reasonable ground to show that they were not really aware about that they also need to sub six gives um, an entity or beneficiary or caregiver the right to import an accessible format either through wire or wireless format without the permission of the copyright owner and are restricted to literary and artistic or i don't think the uk copyright act restricted theirs let me take a quick look mm, not seeing anything about restriction but in terms of accessible and intermediate copies records and notification it states that a person listed in sub three may request an authorized body to make accessible copies intermediate copies and the person must be a disabled person another authorized body or a right holder um, they must list the work that they want to assess the name of the contact detail um but yeah nothing specifically um you know clarifying the kind of works that are restricted to persons with um, disabilities now another thing that also struck my mind is uh, the integrity or moral rights implications um, whereby the artistic work it was respected or is respected when there's a need to change certain things so that it's accessible to a a beneficiary in an alternative format and this is in line with section 14 which talks about an author's moral right so moral right gives you that's under our own law now moral right gives you uh, exclusive rights to detect and prevent any form of distortion mutilation um any anyone that attempts to change certain elements regarding your literary or artistic works so subsection 14 we read says the author of a work in which copyright sources has the right to claim authorship of the work um in particular that is authorship be indicated in connection to any of the eligible works um it has the right to object and to seek relief in connection with any distortion mutilation or modification or any other derogative action in relation to his work where such action would be or is prejudicial to his honor and reputation so i'm basically focusing on section 14 sub 1 paragraph b and it says a person has the right to object to work being falsely attributed to him as an author so with regards to um beneficiaries getting access to their work when you are getting it you need to get the consent of the author to actually change certain things so let's say maybe you're trying to translate or um, put it into the accessible format and you're not getting the right interpretation then you need to um, reach out to the owner of the work to say oh this is what i want to do the work may be mutilated but not to cause you harm or um, um, harm or, or or damage your reputation um and again moral right according to our law now that the copyright act sub three says it's not transmissible during the life of the author and upon death of the author be transmissible by customary disposition or by operation of law and shall subs subsist for the duration of the copyright in the work so if it's literary work 
um, literary work is um, is 70 years after the person dies, so lifetime plus 70 years after the person has came. You don't, you don't go, <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say, uh, benefit of this addition to the law, the benefit of this addition to the law, um, just hold on, guys, trying to get to something so. If you agree with me that this law makes sense, please let's let's when you listen to this, I just be clapping for the drafter because it's not easy to think of all these things. Uh, I mean, I've been involved in drafting of uh, a law, and I will tell you, comparing different laws is is not my mind. You get, it's not bands. <sighs> but yeah, so what? would you say is the benefit of having this law included in the new copyright act so one of the other benefits would be more advocacy and awareness um, raised among governments about the obligations that marrakesh treaty provides uh, maybe more technical assistance and capacity building for authorized entities and users to facilitate the production and exchange of accessible books. And then there need to be some sort of monitoring and evaluation of the impact of the challenges of the treaty and Section 26. And, you know, co coordination, cooperation amongst um, authorized entities, right holders, and users, so that um, Nigeria is able is able to invest in enough resources and infrastructure to be able to produce and distribute accessible um, copyrighted materials such as literary and artistic works that um, beneficiary persons would definitely need. Um, but yeah, that's about it for section 26. Let's move on to the um, exceptions for non-commercial purpose. So for every rule, there is an exception. And for copyright, you have exceptions which fall under non-commercial um, use where you do not intend to make profit from the use of a copyrighted work now this will include um when it's for private use you know we talked about that when we're discussing um the beneficiaries where um making accessible formats um available to them must be for private use um then there's parody there's satire there's caricature there's non-commercial research and private study um criticism review or the reporting of current events um, subject to the condition that if the use is public, it shall where practicable be accompanied by an acknowledgement. So basically, if you're going to do all of the above that I listed, ha you have to acknowledge um, the work, means the title of the work and the author, um, except in an instance where it was incidentally included in a broadcast, and broadcast is a type of eligible copyrighted work now it's now be expressly stated in our laws that um, exceptions to copyright uh, can be identified or called fairly however factors to determine whether um, the use of that work will fall under fair dealing will be one you looking at the purpose and character of its use um, the nature of work amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the work as a whole and effect of the use upon the potential market or value of the work. And this is also similar to the four-factor test that is being used in the U.S. and some other jurisdictions. I do recall that I had um, referenced this when I was discussing the Andy Warhol case. Um, yeah, Andy Warhol case against the... <laughs> so it's... It's, I'm trying to remember the name of the case, but yeah, I just recall the first part, Andy Warhol, uh, which is an interesting case uh, with regards to photographs, so you guys can check it out. 
I think I talked about it in my podcast on Twitter and also um, on my blog as well, my newsletter rather. Um, but then moving forward uh, to other provisions that the use of a work will not be considered to be um, commercial, will be including it in an audiovisual work or broadcast um, of an artistic work in a place that it can be viewed by the public, um, where there's an incidental inclu- inclusion of an artistic work in an audiovisual work or broadcast, quotation in form of short excerpts from a work, um, you know, reading or recitation in public or in a broadcast, not for commercial purpose or for any, or of any reason, extracting from a published literary work. But then you must always acknowledge the title of the work and the author. Where you also make use of the work under the direction or control of the government or by public libraries or non-commercial documentation centers or scientific or other institutions. Um, but the longer shot of it is that the use of that is for public interest. As long as you guys do not intend to generate revenue, and it does not affect the potential market or value of the work in question where you're also going to be reproducing a work either by the direction or control of a broadcasting organization um, where it's intended to be uh, exclusively for lawful broadcast and then is destroyed before the end of a term of six months um, following the making of a reproduction or Longer periods may be, be agreed between the broadcast organization and the owner of the work in question. That reproduction of that work um, may, if it's not an exceptional documentary character, be preserved in the archives of the broadcasting organization. It shall not be used for any other purpose without the consent of the owner. So you see that even with all of these things, you shall still need to go back to the owner of the work to discuss with you and say, CEO, I want to use your work for broadcasting. Um, this is what we're going to use it for, which will also be included in your agreement. Um, lawful broadcast will mean broadcast that does not infringe on a copyrighted work. News of the day for public broadcast or publicly communicated by other means. And then any use of work for the purpose of judicial or legislative um, proceedings or the reporting of such proceedings will not consider to be, um, will be, will fall under the fair dealing. Um, principle and not for commercial purpose now when the use of the work is for uh, when you're when you're making you're, you're making not more than three copies of the work so for for people that like to go to business center photocopying centers um you want to cop- make copies of a full book now the law has expressly said that you cannot make more than three copies of a work three copies of a work by or under the direction of the person in charge of the public library for the use of the library where such work is not available for purpose. So if let's say you're looking for a particular article or journal and it's not available in the library, you're only entitled to three copies of that work which you have to go and make photocopies for. Um, reproduction for the purpose of research, private study or an unpublished literary or, t- or musical work that has been kept in a library, museum or any other similar institution which the public has access to um, transient or incidental reproduction with an integral or essential part of technological process whose sole purpose is to enable transmission in a network between third parties by an, in, by an intermediary or for other lawful use where such use has no independent economic significance. Um, use of an artistic work in form of building model or a drawing or a plan or a, of a building for the purpose of reconstructing. So if you want to reconstruct a, a building uh, you, you can use an artistic work in form of a building model as long as you're not going to commercialize it. Um, where you use it for the benefit of a person with disability, already stated in section 26, and ha- is for non commercial purpose, um, but is specifically required for the specific disability, whether it's a print or visually impaired or blind. And then when you're communicating or making available the work or materials of it, that uh, is subject to purchase or licensing terms to the members of the public for the purpose of research. So if, let's say, the work in question you have, 
is subject to um, a purchase or has licensing terms if you're going to be using it for um, research purpose private use um, on the premises of publicly accessible libraries or educational establishment museum or, or archives as long as you're not going to, to commercialize it then that's fine if you're going to be commercializing it then you need to still reach out to the to the copyright owners to get their consent to commercialize what you want to do then you then have um, reproduction of a copy or adaptation of a computer program is permitted so long as the purpose for that is to use with a computer um, for which the computer program was obtained archival purpose or you are trying to replace an original copy that was lost say an original copy of the computer program that was lost destroyed or rendered unusable that's when you are only allowed to adapt or copy a, a computer program um, if it was destroyed as well you're allowed to do so but with respect to any other computer program that is not necessary for the machine to be activated such program or part is not assessed or used other than to make new copies and any other contractual term which purpose restricts that restricts you from doing any of the permitted acts so long and short when it comes to um non-commercial use there are certain acts that the new copyright act has listed as permitted that that you can do um so if you want to make copies of the computer program you have to make sure that is because the original is missing it's been destroyed it's no longer available you know all of those things can be taken into consideration you also need to acknowledge the, the author of the work so that's about it for um the general exceptions um under the copyright act so the take down notice as found on that section 54 of the nigerian copyright act is kind of similar to the dmca take down notice which is basically for protecting copyrighted content online um in the u.s it's, it's content that are copyrighted are removed from websites or internet platform at the request of the owners of the work and other are laws as well it seeks to tackle intellectual property infringement carried out online especially now where it's easy for anyone to just upload download stream and do all, all manner of things uh, when it comes to your copyright content um, it also gives the copyright owner the right to issue a takedown notice like i stated is similar to the dmca notice uh, requesting that the infringing content be removed online now is there like a possible alliance with relevant stakeholders to enforce this um when we get our first viral i think we should be getting our first viral takedown notice i mean it's been happening but not formally because we did not have a law that made provisions for um outright takedown of copyrighted content online um we also find that most jurisdictions or countries tend to come up with their own because they felt that the the um dmca takedown notice its proceedings and all of that were a bit too um stiff or technical so countries rather come up with their own format than you know rely on the dmca um which you know list setting materials they considered to be um, contents that can be removed for instance user generated content from platforms like facebook and tiktok especially when they get that request you also need to check out your um terms of use and privacy policies that you you just click agree to and then website owners who get um the notice from the dmca from the website owners or the hosting company um, where the website owner upon receiving the notice from the copyright owner or content owner or distributor or publisher or from the um, internet service provider or the hosting company 
or where an infringing website is taken down from offline by its um, hosting company this occurs between the website owner who does not voluntarily comply with the takedown notice as described so that is the dmca format now let's bring it back home as a copyright owner this is your right to request that um internet service providers take down disable mm -hmm. any access any unauthorized and illegal access mm -hmm. to your work hosted on their platform or website um how do you commence a, a takedown notice in nigeria first you'll be required to do a written application you then have to include like your physical or electronic signature uh, of the person authorized to act on behalf of the copyright owner identify the work claim to have been infringed identify the infringing material or the subject of infringing activity that is to be removed um, you need to put in personal details like your name um, address um, phone number um, then do like a declaration on oath that the that you believe that it is your work that was being used without your consent or that you're acting on behalf of this person because he's authorized to act as his agent and then a statement that the information you've stated in the notification is is accurate and that you have been authorized to act for or on behalf of the owner of the copyrighted work so you see that it looks easy but it's not really easy at the same time there's also like a uh, preliminary conversation or meetings between the isp and the alleged infringer um and all that then for someone so the process for taking it down after they've gotten your application um for notice of infringement under section 54 they will notify the person saying oh this person is accusing you of abusing their work and we're going to take it down so they give you some sort of um room to come and plead or respond to the notice they don't just uh arbitrarily don't they don't just remove it like that without to inform you but sometimes it can be done um and then you'll be notified that oh this is the action that the isp has taken um the service provider may resume access to or restore the content or the link that if they receive a counter notice from the subscriber that which he has forwarded to the owner the corporate owner or received that they did not receive if they did not receive within seven days after forwarding the counter notice the response from the person that laid the complaint will re they will, they will uh, restore the content back um the service provider must or like the law to the shall take effective oh gosh the service provider shall take effective steps in accordance with high industry standards to prevent any content taken down or removed under this provision to be reloaded now one thing again that i found really interesting while comparing the us dmca and the nigerian um take take down notice provision is that under the dmca um they were clear as to the type of informations that um can be considered so you know when you say you're copyrighted so they clearly listed that the, the type of um information that one can um report so such as um your url links um the source of the url description of of the ownership how the the work was being used without your consent whereas in our old law it stated that the copyright owner just needs to id identify the subject i think that's a bit ambiguous but, but, but that's my personal view anyways um the dmc also listed who could file a takedown notice to include the content creator the owners copyright owners nft owners see they're thinking like sorry let me not say they're thinking oh my god so sorry guys um i think for them they'll be proactive because of the kind of terrain they are in and like i initially stated our our present copyright law tackles our current issues so moving on 
um, code writers and publishers, um, social media users and participants, subjects. Um, con they must also include um, subject contained within the content and the published and the work that was published without permission. Content publisher or distributor, whereas section fifty four. Um, just stated that the person authorized to act on or on behalf. So, if you want to um, be strategic, you can say, "Oh, this person act that's acting on behalf of this person is a publisher, is a distributor, he's an NFT owner, is a content um, creator, etc., etc." Um, I would also say that we played it safe by not listing the type of content um that can be you know reported to the isps and all that so that is just my comment and feedback for this session section brother but if you look at um subsection four of the act it states that if you're if someone is dissatisfied with the decision of the service provider they can apply to uh, they can refer the matter to the nigerian copyright commission for determination so you see that they have a right of appeal i, I think i said that when i was talking about the role of um, the commission as well the powers and you know that have been expanded then it also said the service provider shall not be liable to any person for any action under this section in good faith and i was like how do you then define um good faith but maybe i'm just overthinking it then Finally, sub six says every provider who fails to comply with the provision in sub one two shall be liable for failure of such a breach of statutory duty and infringement of the content, which is the subject matter of the notice under section fifty four. So yeah, there you have it on take down notices. Then for any, for instances where you have for instances where you have like a serial infringe uh, the service provider upon receiving that will send um, a, a letter in writing warning the subscriber that he has been identified as a serial offender um i do recall while i was doing my master's that we had gotten a letter from a former housemate uh, about him using copyrighted materials and all that i think they asked him to come um uh, and face a panel or something can't really remember the details but something similar to that and the person who gets the warning notice can challenge on the ground of mistake or misidentification uh he has to do that within 10 days from the date of receiving the warning he has to send a counter counter notice to the service provider including his contact details and um, the real um facts about his account which has been misidentified um and the basis for challenging it and if the basis for challenging it cannot be resolved within 10 days the matter shall be referred to the commission so the commission also you know is actively involved in all of these things then the service provider acting in good faith in suspending the account of a subscriber relying on information contained in the information re referred to in subject shall not be liable to anybody for any claim based on the suspension so if they did if the service provider said ah oh, this is an issue let me help you guys because it's just like the um um spongebob spongebob case where youtube had to take down the video uh within for 24 hours and later restored it back i know when I, last time i checked they had like a million plus views on the spongebob um fan work that was treated um misrepresentation where the person has been misrepresented under this section that's under section 57 and that material infringe or activity is infringing or the material was removed or disabled by mistake or misidentification is liable in damages for injuries suffered so you just, you still have some sort of remedies if there was some sort of misrepresentation but then it doesn't state who would be liable I think okay i think it's the copyright owner who will be held liable for this misrepresentation because they are the ones that are triggering the notice first of all so yeah so prior to recording this episode i was going through the act 
one day and a particular section just caught my eye and i was like hmm and i think the previous day as well two days before then um there was this uk case that um someone had shared and i was like okay i think this actually goes let me read this again and see uh, how it relates to us in nigeria and it kind of fit for me so um when i posted it i was like what is the function of functional shapes in nigeria um copyright law so what do you think when you read section 10 sub 2 so let's read it together so it says the protection of three-dimensional work of artistic craftsmanship shall not extend to its functional aspect three-dimensional work of artistic craftsmanship i mean if this was to be an exam question i'm pretty sure my students would be like and raise wicked and all that but this is what the law now provides so i decided to take a deep dive into it just to you know enlighten myself and also um be well prepared when i get asked that kind of question um majorly when you hear or functional aspect of um a creative work or an intellectual property two things might come to your mind um industrial design and patent um but that seems to be more geared towards industrial design or patent um design for jurisdiction like the us so basically many countries will protect functional aspect of an artistic work artistic works are already copyrighted will be eligible for copyright works um and just hold on guys let me just reconfirm this and yeah and section 10 is actually talking about um the the exclusive rights that the owner of an artistic work enjoy which includes to reproduce the work to publish it to include it in the work of an audiovisual work so when i talk about audiovisual work i am referring to cinematograph works so let's not sound foreign to you guys um you also can broadcast it you can communicate the work to the public you can make the work available to the public by wire or wireless means um you can also make an adaptation of the work or do an adaptation of the work do in relation to an adaptation of the work any of the acts specified from one a b and c so that is it that is that on um um exclusive rather than artistic work on but let's get back to our question what is the functionality of a um what is the function what is the functionality of a an, of an artistic work under the nigerian copyright act does the new copyright act need provision for the protection of functional aspect of an artistic work and the answer is hell freaking no and that is because artistic works would include paintings drawing etchings in lithographs wood cuts, engravings prints work of artistic craftsmanship pictorial woven tissue um works of architecture in the form of building models you get and there is no functionality or or responsibility you know that is um, attached to that and this is because copyright principle is based on the expression of a work on original character um, in a tangible format and copyright um, is focused on encouraging creatives um, to you know keep expressing their works or keep using their human intellect to create um, works um, we also protect the right of the authors to ensure that they're not just rewarded but recognized and as we, we saw as part of the aims of this new act it, also, it seeks to reward and recognize any in i would say any human intellectual effort whereas other intellectual property mechanisms such as industrial design patent right focuses solely on protecting the investment of the functional aspect of the artistic work against imitation and unfair competition copyright will focus on unauthorized use 
patents, patent and industrial design will focus on uh, protecting limitations and unfair competition in the market. And one of the ways that creatives can protect functional aspects of an artistic work is by obtaining an industrial design which has faded. Industrial design is a type of intellectual property mechanism um, that must be new and novel. Um, the combination of lines and colors, um, lines, colors, yeah, um, and, and helps prevent other people from making, using, or selling similar designs without permission. So the the shape of my laptop, the uh, design of my mic, um, it's a small mic anyways. Um, additionally, trademarking the design name or logo can, can help you distinguish um, your brand from another one. It's also important that you consult an intellectual property lawyer to advise you on the best way to protect yourself. Now, um, if there is no copy available in Nigeria, um, so this, and I'm going further to, to talk about um, copyright in the work of architecture, uh, where the exclusive right to control the erection, it can, it can also include the exclusive right to control the erection of any building. And which reproduces the whole or substantial part of the work either in its original form or any other form recognizably derived from the original but not the right to control the reconstruction so an architectural work or an artistic person who creates an architectural design or model has the right to control the direction of how the building will be used where it can use all or some part of the the, the model but he cannot control any reconstruction. So in the event it is a natural disaster, an act of God, he cannot go and say, oh, you cannot use the same style of the original building. Um, you know, you cannot reconstruct it. He really doesn't have the right. But then, moving forward, if there's no copy available in Nigeria that has been put on sale for six months, the Copyright Commission can issue a compulsory non-exclusive license to reproduce and publish an artistic work um, after its expiration from the date of first publication for certain purposes, but will be sold at a lower price after paying same fees to the commission and calculated royalties in respect of the copies for reproduction to the owner of the art artistic work. So I already talked about the exclusive right that an artistic owner enjoys. So that's about it for whether or not um functional shapes or designs or three-dimensional works um can be put the functional aspect of a three-dimensional work can be protected under the nigerian copyright act have you ever heard of the levy that's being placed on copyright material now let me explain this was formally found on that section 40 of the Copyright Act 2004 that was repealed um, and amended. Now, in 2012, Nigeria um, joined other jurisdiction to create a copyright levy order 2012 um, so that they could impose some sort of percentage on on gadgets devices that can be used um, that can or may be used to infringe copyright in a work such as um, CD compact disc players photocopiers cameras mobile phones software computers now under the new act um, the levy on copyright material can be found in section 89 and it states that there shall be a, a levy on any material used or capable of being used to infringe copyright in a work now this levy is payable under subsection 1 and any exemption from such payment shall be as may be prescribed by the minister the levy payable on shall be subject to approval deduction to be paid um Approved deductions to be paid into the fund of the commission, and the commission shall have the power to reimburse the funds. Um, material in this case, in this instance, will include objects, equipment, machines, contrivances, 
or any device including electronic or digital system used or capable of being used to infringe copyright in a work remember again like i stated this present copyright act protects or was created to solve our current issues so you find out that certain devices that you have already have some sort of tax um fee levied against them now how did this come to be we already know that copyright gives the um holder the right to authorize and control any form of reproduction publication to um the public now in an event where someone or in this present area era rather where ease of reproduction um is what is trending how do you then um protect yourself now let's link it back to technological protective measures which is also found under section 50 sub 3 which defines technological measures to be a techno technology device product or hold on let me get it okay i think i just passed it anyway so 50 sub 3a says technological protection measure means it's technology device product or component that is incorporated in the work designed to effectively prevent or inhibit the infringement of any copyright so you see that um the act not only um, did not only go to you know make provision for um, online infringement but also being proactive um you know especially in the digital era where anyone can decide to want to um bypass or remove um protective measures that you've put in place to make sure that no one infringes on your work so it goes for that to, to to define circumvent technological protective measures to be where someone avoids bypass removes or deactivate or decrypt i mean any technological measures that have been put in place by the copyright holder to prevent any form of infringement and it goes for that to say a technological protection measure protects a work under the act and if the measure is in the ordinary course of its operation controls access to the work protected uh, or prevents or restricts any acts that are not authorized by the authors consent or permitted um under this session it does not extend to measures which in the normal course of operation only controls access to a work for non-infringing purpose non-infringing purpose um would be for non-commercial purpose you're not making money from it and it goes further to state this is like an exception that say for a non-profit library or archive or educational institution which gains access to a commercially exploited copyright um to make good faith determination or whether to acquire a copy of the work for the purpose of engaging in conduct permitted conduct permitted would be private use as stated under section 24 general exceptions um so then that work cannot be retained longer than necessary to make the good faith determination it cannot be used for any other purpose um that you know is permitted under the act now the introduction of good faith determination where a non-profit library is um, i would say it's new but then i think the law should have gone further to define what a good faith determination would be just to prevent any form of um you know confusion if someone claims that they do not really understand what is actually happening then subsection 5 makes provision for an exception where there's an identical copy not available in another format um the permitted act is lawfully authorized um investigation but it doesn't state who can sanction this um investigation you know now in the event where you get concept permission authorization to use a computer program you're also allowed to use technology measures to gain access to a particular portion of that program for the sole purpose of um, research to identify and analyze and exchange information and mutually use information with other programs then there's a dispute resolution mechanism under section 52 sub 1 which states that the copyright holder can commence action um 
the copyright owner can commence action at the federal high court which has the jurisdiction to hear IP related disputes and the remedies available includes damages accounts of profit and also they can get an injunction I mean an action for the convention of technology protective measures um, liable for a term of one year imprisoning if the person makes or imports into Nigeria any technology or device that can be used to carry out um, to carry out uh, acts that are considered to um, bypass the technological and protective measures that the copyright owner has put in place. The person will be liable to a fine of one million naira imprisonment for a term of at least five years or both. Now, if you also sell, hire, distribute tech or technological, um, in technology or device used for circumvention or um, a technological protection measure, you will be liable to a fine of 500,000 and a term of at least three years or both. Now, if you're also in, in that line of business that sells, hires, rent, render services that assist people to bypass uh, protective measures already put in place by the copyright owner, you could be liable, or you not you could, you shall be liable to a fine of 200,000, I think it's too small, ah. <laughs> or a term of one year or both. So kudos again, like I said, to the copyright owner. Then look at um, section 51 talks about falsification, alteration, or removal of rights management information. So basically, uh, in an instance, if you knowingly remove um, or alter any information that identifies a copyright owner, if you sell, distribute, uh, you import for distribution um, any copyrighted work or copyright subject matter. Um, um, the number or the code included um, in connection to uh, communicating to the public without the authorization, permission, and consent of the owner, you shall um, you shall be liable to a term to a fine of not less than two hundred thousand imprisonment for a term of not less than one year or both. So you find out that for um, issues or infringement relating to um, private levy of copyright materials and technological protective protection measures there is a minimum sanction that has been set aside by the law and sub sub 3 or 51 defines right management information to include um, any information that is attached or appearing in connection to communication to the public information could be who the author is, um, who the author is. So if you go and falsify, knowingly remove, um, set this information so you can um, aid or enable or facilitate or conceal some sort of infringement of a copyrighted work, you are liable to a term of not less than one year. So that's about it for copyright levy and TPM. I would say, but if you have further questions, you want to talk about it, um, you know, trying to understand how, where the origin of um, copyright levy began in Nigeria, I think we can, can just check out certain research work. I think I, I came across um, a publication by um, Dr. Ife Oluwa A. Olubi. She wrote... Um, the compilation of IP laws in Nigeria. So I believe she's working on the amended version to include the new copyright act and any other regulation that will be included as well. So if you haven't bought the previous one, the copies, you can look out for the um, second edition, which, like I said, she may be working on. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not certain, but I know she will be working on that. Um, so what is definitely, so just to conclude, what's justification for a levy um on copyrighted i mean we are practically in the digital era so it's very important that um you know we're able to to um negotiate some sort of costs that can be attached to all of these devices that aid the use of copyrighted work um 
you can also help the copyright owners to enforce their right against private individuals um so you find that the commission is not acting as a middle person to help um, the copyright owner it will also benefit the copyright owner financially um it can also um reduce the rate of exploitation of copyright and neighboring rights within nigeria so yeah now you can act you a singer you a musician dancer you um can deliver um interpret or perform literary artistic works or expression of folklore um doesn't matter the format of the work then this section that i'm about to review is for you to partake in dra dramatic performance such as dance and mime uh, musical performance reading or recitation of literary art or any similar presentation which is a live performance given by one or more individual then section 63 to section 73 that's 10 chapters dedicated for you whereas in the previous act and we had just the uh, one two three four five sections dedicated for performance rights or otherwise known as neighboring rights so let's start with the introduction which is under section 63 now under section 63 the act provides that a performer shall have shall so it's mandatory exclusive right to control how his performance is used whether is the fixation of his own fixed performance or a production of a fixation of his performance in any manner or form um if the original fixation other than the fixation excluded in section 68 um from the necessity from obtaining consent of the performer was itself made without his consent um reproduction is made for the purpose other than the purpose where which they gave consent to the making of original fixation of or the production or original fixation was made in accordance with section 68 so let's look at what 68 talks about so 68 talks about exceptions to performance rights where a performer consents to you know you including his performance in a visual or audiovisual um copyrighted work now it goes further to say that um the provision of part two of this act shall apply with necessary modification so what does part two state oh gosh so part two of this act is talking about um first ownership of copyright ownership of copyright in a collective world assignment and licensing compulsory license to produce and publish translation compulsory license to reproduce and publish for, for certain purposes license for broadcasting organizations um definition for the purposes of compulsory license to pub to publish and produce translation to reproduce and publish works for for certain purposes and finally compulsory license for public interest so i guess after this i'm going to be talking about um, the compulsory license and then ownership transfer and license are stated on that oh sorry that's part three. Oh my gosh sorry um part two talks about general exceptions which is uh you know the fair dealing principle the four factor principle um acts for purpose of instruction or examination or recording of broadcast by educational establishment restriction of reprographic copying by educational institution um Special provision for archives, library, museum, galleries, special attention for blind, visually impaired, or otherwise print disabled persons, special exceptions in respect of sound recording of musical works, and that's about it. So let's go back to section 68 now. Yeah. So recall that section 68 talks about exception to a performance, right? So it goes further to say, that any performance or a fixation of a performance reproduction may be used without the consent required under section 63 if um, the purpose for doing that 
you in, for the purpose of doing that you demonstrate in good faith of a radio or television receiver or recording or playback equipment to clients by a dealer in those receiver or that equipment the production or short extracts from an object of the performance rights and reports or current events are kind of like fair deal in any way so for research private study of an object of performance right kept in publicly accessible libraries educational establishment museums or archives um on the premises of the set so you have to do all of this within the set, um, premises of these um, institutions that are listed the libraries and you know the museums and the archive then reproduction for the benefit of people with disability which is directly related to the disability and the non-commercial nature the extent required by the disability and making of an inferior recording of an object of performance right by broadcast organizations by means of their own facilities for their own broadcast provided that that recording may be preserved for a period of not more than 30 days uh, and must be erased after the use of for broadcasting so it kind of gives you some sort of data protection um, requirements where um, you're required to retain data so far as you do that with the consent of the data subject within a timeline and then talking about the recordings of an exceptional documentary character may be transferred to designated archive for preservation so the fair dealing principle for performance is well detailed and i would say again kudos to the um drafters because it wasn't included in the previous act and this kind of helps you know set tools or deal with some um, issues that we've seen um, within the last couple of weeks then um, let's go back to you know rights of performance now you also have the right to distribute to the public by sale so recall let's take that again from the beginning a performer has um, exclusive right to control how his performance is used whether it's in a fixed or on fixed format the production of the fixation remember fixation talking about tangible formats um which will include reproduction for a purpose of no more than other than the respect for which the, the, con the performer gave consent to original fixation in accordance with section 68 uh which is the exceptions for or the fair dealing exceptions for performance right um they also have the right to distribute to the public by sale or transfer ownership of its performance or copies that have not been subject to distribution authorized by the the, the performer um, broadcasting and communicating his work whether on fixed performance um in the broadcast to the public itself um renting and lending to the public or public lending of a fixation or copies of the fixation of his performance irrespective of the ownership of the copyright of the copy rented or lent making available to the public of his fixed performance by wire or wireless means in a, in a way that members of the public may assess them from the place or time individually sent individually chosen by them then i've already listed um what performance will include when i was the, you know talking to the actors and the rest then let's go to protected performance which is under section 64 which talks about the right granted to the performance just like the ones i listed right to you know um, distribute to broadcast to rent to lend and um, to distribute to you know control how his performance is being used and all of that um and the right granted to a performance that shall apply in respect of any um, performance if on the date of the performance at least one of the performers is a citizen or have or or resident in nigeria the performance took place in nigeria was fixed um fixated in nigeria or done in nigeria or in a country who is signatory to a treaty or other international agreement which nigeria is signatory to such as the rome convention which um these performers in audiovisual work such as films or videos television drama rights against unauthorized broadcast or recording or their performance um moving on um where the question arises as to whether a country is part to so just i think I, I mentioned that earlier on so when someone is trying to query the the um whether a country is signatory or a member state of a treaty that nigeria is part of 
with copyright commission will issue a certification stating that oh this this country is also a member state of the treaty that nigeria belongs to now presumption of consent which is very important because when you're dealing with ip consent permission or authorization is something that you must not joke with without consent you cannot do anything anything without that is an infringement so in the absence of, of an express agreement to the contrary the performance consent to the broadcasting of his performance shall be deemed to include his consent to an authorized rebroadcasting of his performance the position of his performance for broadcasting purpose and the reproduction for broadcasting purpose of such so i mean it's like what so when you give consent for someone to do something not someone at all so you gave your consent that your performance should be um broadcasted now what the law is saying that all that rights that you've now given that person is the right You've authorized them to rebroadcast your performance um for the, your your performance shall be only for broadcasting purpose and the reproduction for broadcasting purpose so they're not going to go outside the confines of that um, agreement and i believe it's going to be for a term of duration then again moral right for performance love it for you guys i mean um before it wasn't extended to performance but it was kind of implied that performance also had moral rights so moral right for general did i say general i don't know so let me just say moral right for literary and artistic work or musical works will imply that they have the right to you know preserve or make sure that no one distorts their creativity so the same thing also applies for performance here First right is that they have to be identified that the performer in connection with any use of their performance or the position uh, object or prevent any distortion, mutilation or modification of their performance uh, or any other derivative action um, that would cause harm to their reputation and also it shall not be transmissible during their lifetime but upon their death, with that performance death it shall be transmissible by customary disposition or by operation of law and shall subsist for the duration of the performance rights. Um, let's look at collective performance and where several performers as a group take part in the same performance, it shall su suffice with the consent required under section 65. You know, I talked about consent where your consent there was expressly agreed and you agree that it can be rebroadcasted and you can reproduce your your the broadcasting of your your performance as well so where what am i talking about now yeah so it says um where the consent required under section 65 is given by any person in charge of the group or any payment for the use of performance uh may unless otherwise stipulated be made to such person and subject to any contract between them be divided so if for instance now you're a band group and you have like point one should i be saying that now you have someone who is um like your leader and he can make decisions on your behalf he can also receive payment on your behalf but outside the contract it will be divided equally amongst all of you because you are all um collective performance so i already talked about the exception which is similar to the fair dealing principle now let's talk about transfer of performance rights in an audio visual work so the provision of section 30 what does section 30 state again let me get back to that so section 30 focuses on assignment and, li and license so it says for the purpose of chapter 4 of the constitution love it again i mean um copyright shall be deemed to be a movable property and shall be transferable by way of an assignment customary disposition or operation of law an assignment or testimony disposition of copyright may be limited to only some of the acts um which the owner of the copyright has the exclusive right to control or to a part only of the period of the copyright or to specified country so it kind of like gives you an idea of what should be also included in the um assignment contract that will be signed um between part i think no i think this will mainly be used between cmos uh, that's collective management organization which i will talk about later and um, um copyright owners such as musicians and authors and you know um all the groups that that are, are members of a 
collective mining organization um, an assignment of copyright or an exclusive license to do an act the doing of which is controlled by pressure shall have no effect unless it's in writing similar to the previous provision under section i think it's yeah 11 under section 11 where that where it says that an assignment or an exclusive license must be in writing shall be in writing a non-exclusive license to do an act which is controlled by copyright may be written oral or inferred from conduct you know i think that's pretty easy um an assignment or license granted by one copyright owner shall have effect if granted by his co-owner so same thing kind of like um, when we're talking about the collective performance um so here that's under section 30 so far it says um any assignment or license granted by one copyright owner shall have effect as if granted by his own co-owner or subject to any agreement between them any fee receipt shall be divided equally amongst the co-owners then it goes further to say for the purpose of these sections persons shall be deemed to be co-owners if they share joint interest in the whole or part of the copyright or have interest in the copyright in various work comprised in a production of two or more works sub seven says ownership of a material in which a work is embodied shall not control ownership um then an, a copyright owner who transfers ownership of his material in which the work is embodied shall not be deemed to have transferred his copyright so even if someone transfers their copyright to you they're not giving you the economic right or moral right to be rec recognized as the copyright owner you get um or that you have the, the or to have granted a license for the exploitation no even if it was provided for in an agreement, an owner of the copyright who transfers the ownership of his material has not transferred his copyright. So take note, the fact that I signed an agreement with you doesn't mean I have transferred ownership of my intellectual property or copyright as well. Now it says further that, except as otherwise provided for an agreement, an owner of the copyright who transfers his copyright or grants a license for the exploitation of the work shall not be deemed to have transferred ownership. Same thing, I think you just kind of narrow this down to NFTs where people feel that if you if you buy a minted copy of an limited edition, you own the, the right to it. No, you do not, man. I was going to use a swear word, but I'm not going to do that because I have um, listeners who are preteens. Uh, yeah, so let's let's keep my podcast holy. <laughs> uh, but moving on... Um, I think I've already explained that the intent says an assignment or license or testimony disposition. Testimony disposition. Now, when I mentioned testimony um, disposition, I meant either it was a deed of gift or it was included in a will. So whenever you hear that, you know that that is what I am talking about. So um, any, I, I, I say so. Sub 10 of 30 says an, an assignment, license, or testimony disposition may be granted or made in respect of a future work or an existing work um, in which a copyright does not subsist. Provided it shall not be permitted to transfer the rights in all future works of an author. I think I, if you are a creative, especially my musicians and book authors, be very wary of this section. You get. Um, so you don't end up losing something that, you know. So, okay, I think I, I misinterpreted that, but let, let's take that again. An assignment, you know, you're giving someone permission to do this. A license, consent to do this. Put in the will, granting them um, copyright, um, giving them access to use your copyrighted work. That does not mean that they have the right to transfer the, your own rights now in all your works, all your future works to some other person. They do not have the right to do that a testimony disposition of a material on which a work is first rec written or recorded shall the absence of any indication to the contrary be presumed to include any copyright or uh, prospective copyright in the work which is vested in the disease not this um, so basically if you if your will hold on hold on so remember I said testimony disposition could be either be a deed of gift or will now. In an event where the work in question was first recorded or or written and there's no other um indication that you know 
there's another work and this another it, it is presumed i hope i'm interpreting this right but i would i would reach out to ncc to help me for that explain but i'm doing the best i can um that work created is considered to include copyright or any prospective copyright in the work um which is vested in the diseased so for instance let's use the green who died now he already had catalogs or portfolio of um, copyrighted work musical works um so he's already he, he's already assumed or presumed that the work musical work he has um includes a copyright or has protect prospective copyright in the musical work and sound recording as the case may be always open to conversation guys so let's not be like we're fighting yeah if i did not explain 30 sub um 11 please let me know or just correct me send me an email to ipseriesinfo at gmail.com but let's get let's wrap up um let's wrap up section that's the performance at performance rights session and then we'll be done so duration for performance rights is for a period of 50 years commencing from the end of the year when the performance was first fixed then infringement how do you know you've infringed the performance work when you do or cause any person to you know do any act and not provided for under section 63 remember 63 talks about um he went further to list what a performance is and the exclusive rights that a performance um a performer rather <laughs> a performer has and uh, where you buy you go to broadcast a substantial part of a live performance hmm. the video had his held his timeless um concert so if you go ahead to broadcast a substantial part of his live performance either by recording it um or the person has was to do where well, you did that with her um, the videos concert i'm using the videos one because um, i'm recording this particular one a day after his his performance but yeah um if you import for reasons other than for private use if you import any performance work other than for private use or the exceptions as listed for um, performance rights um you also be infringing uh, you use a recording of a performance work for other than for domestic use or private use you're infringing now if in the course of your do you doing business is doing business you end up selling or lending leasing for hire distribute or display sell a recording of a performance work such as any dirty december video without their consent you know that's an infringement now section 72 says an infringement of a right protected under 63 and 65 is actionable by a breach as a breach of statutory duty and the person having the right shall be entitled to damages injunctions and account of profit or conversion now where a person in the course of doing his business has in his possession custody or control an unauthorized recording of a performance the person having the performance right or recording right in relation to the performance shall be entitled to an order of court that the recording be forfeited and delivered up to him i mean this this new act is pro really proactive and let's see how ntc um make sure that everyone is compliant to this provision now let's look at criminal liability um in respect of an infringement of performance now anyone who without the consent or authorization of a performer does any act as i listed previously from section 70 you sell you hired you recorded you broadcasted you imported you did everything that you're not supposed to do and you're not a performer um, unless you can prove to court that your conduct that you did not know that your conduct was an infringement of the performance right you are committed an offense and liable to um conviction now if it's for an individual a fine of hundred hundred thousand ah anyways minimum sanction you're entitled to at least hundred thousand naira or imprisonment for a term of at least one year or both and if you're a body corporate to a fine of two million naira sweet right yeah now a court before which an offense under section is tried may order that the recording or any other part 
you deliver to the person and title to the performance like love it 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 <laughs> so yeah that's about it for performance right let's get into should i go should i talk about assignment no should i talk about folklore no i think so but yeah i would i would i would touch a bit on folklore um anti-piracy um how you can claim copyright to work very important and i'll just you know make my closing shall we take a look at anti-piracy measures why do you have or why do jurisdiction um you know draft anti-piracy strategies or measures basically to prevent illegal sharing of content um use of copyrighted content um prevent the distribution of pirated copies um so that the copyright users are properly remunerated uh, you know you can also take actions against people that are uh, repeated offender so kind of like ties it back to um you know take down notices the um technological protection measures um so let's look at what the law has to say so the law provides that for anti-piracy me measures the Copyright Commission shall have the power with the consent of the Minister to prescribe any design, label, mark, impression or any anti-piracy device for use or in connection with any working which copyright subsists. Any person who sells, rent, hires or offers for sale, rentals or hire, any work in contravention of the prescription made under subsection 1 commits an offence and is liable to a fine of 500000 Again, minimum sanction. <laughs> or... An imprisonment for a term of three years or both. Any person who, without the permission of the commission, um, imports into Nigeria or has in his possession any machine, instrument, or um, anything that can be used for the production of anti piracy devices, uh, commits an offense liable to a fine of one million naira or an imprisonment for a term of at least five years. Now, if any person who, without the permission of the commission, so for anti-piracy works, I would say the, the, the copyright commission is like spearheading or representing the copyright owners, making sure that um, there's no room for um, people to want to um, leak, say, a movie such as Gangos Lagos that just came out in 24 hours, where already copies out there, um, original it helps you also prevent or uh, be able to track the original source of leakage or unauthorized use uh, making um copyrighted work available online you know so basically the the commission helps restrict these anti-piracy measures are put in place to restrict copyright infringement receives easy access um of content especially in line of uh, you know we've been in the streaming era um you know so going further it says any person who without permission of the commission is in possession of any anti-piracy device prescribed under the section um and for no reason does not believe has no reason to believe that um what he has is not an anti-piracy work or device is liable to a fine of hundred thousand or imprisonment of at least a term of one year or both. The commission shall have the power, the consent of the com uh, minister, to make regulations, specifying condition, whatever. So, um, anti-piracy uh, measures to take legal actions against um, copyright infringement to help reduce and eliminate illegal sharing of copyrighted content um would a cease and desist letter um 
help in this instance i i guess so you can say so it also goes to show that the creative content is valid when you issue a season and this letter so looking forward to the regulation that the commission will make with regards to anti-piracy measures and let's talk about the need to or the duty to keep records and it says any person who so if a publisher printer producer manufacturer aggregator of works um in which copyright sources you are required to keep a record of all your works you've come in contact with in the course of doing business such as the name of the author title of the work data date of use or production quantity of the work used or produced especially where you now see that there are pirated copies of book being sold or reproduced or distributed when you have those records you're able to track and know who um went behind it to go and you know print out or publish more copies without your consent but maybe within your workplace or or not or whatever um any other information that may be required by the commission and any person who fails to keep record under this section um or makes a courses in the mid or does impute any false entry or produces or tenders or causes to be produced or tendered as evidence and entry that is known to be false, commits an offense liable to a fine of 100,000 imprisonment for a term of at least one year or both. And then sub three says any copyright owner or any person having an interest in a work shall on written demand be furnished with information relating to the work. So you can demand to get your record um, just to follow up from your own side now let's take a look at the compulsory license so next up on our review is compulsory license um, to produce and publish translation compulsory license to publish reproduce works for certain purposes i think this is a a welcome development in the act and the act went ahead to say that it's only qualified persons people who they feel uh, want to use this for you know want to teach um you know scholarship purpose research you apply for a license to the commission as the copyright commission so that you can be able to produce and publish a translation of, of a literary work um and at the end what you get is a non-exclusive license to produce and publish we already know that non-exclusive means not it's not only one person that has the um that was granted the right to do certain um exclusive rights that are granted to a copyright owner you can also pay um, the owner of the copyright work some royalties in for the copies of the translation of the work that you produce and then the commission will also calculate the rate for which um, the royalty will go um, that license does not extend to you exporting copies of it and each copy of that translation must contain a notice uh, that it is only available for distribution in nigeria it shall not it's, it will not also apply to export by government or any of the agencies um of such copies and the license in question granted shall not um so it says a license shall not be granted by a commission under this section until the expiration of one year from the date of first publication of the translation that you did three years from the date of first publication of the work where application for a license for translation into English and then the license will not also be granted if the uh, copyright commission is not satisf satisfied that the translation into the language that you've published um, or if into the language that has been published or reproduced with if you've gotten consent of the copyright or not actually um, translate as so we've gotten the right of translation from the copyright owner and if you have proved to um, the commission that you had been denied permission by the owner to actually um, produce and publish a translation after you've done your due diligence you will not get a license as well um, 
where you do your due diligence and you're still unable to find the owner of the copyright and you had already sent permission to the publisher whose name appeared on was not less than two months before applying for the license you know um different things that have been included i think one thing that i want to um point to or direct our attention to is the fact that it says the period of six months has elapsed from the date of sending the request um and have not been published by the owner of the copyright in the work or any person authorized by him within a period of nine months then you also include the name of the author the title of the particular edition that you want to translate um, where the work is composed mainly of illustration the provision of section six are are complied with the author has not withdrawn copies of the work from circulation you know the co commission may also withdraw that license um if the grant has ceased to exist as well so if i, I would want to interpret this to mean that the copyright owner has either um terminated his license or whatever then you also have compulsory license to reproduce and publish for certain purpose so this one is more specific it has to be done uh, with a purpose in mind for instance if copies of the edition was not made available in nigeria or has not been put in sale in nigeria for a period of six months um by the owner of the right of reproduction remember that each copyright work has exclusive rights that are accorded to um the copyright auto and I mean same reasons why a license will not be granted to you by the commission um and then they went on that so subsection 732 says the provision of this section shall not apply shall also apply to reproduction and publication tra or translation into languages spoken in nigeria of any text incorporated in audio visual fixation prepared and published solely for the purpose of systematic instructional activity so i would say the copyright act is a bit clear as to what um, um users intending users should do when it comes to copyright work the relevant period in relation to any work means a period of seven years from the date of first publication of a work in respect of a fiction poetry drama music or art and three years from the from the first date of the first publication of a work in respect of natural science, physical science, mathematics, or technology. Then there's the compulsory license for public interest. No definition for what public interest would be, but basically what the art is saying is that the commission may authorize someone to use the copyrighted work for the purpose of rectifying the abuse of a dominant market position or again promote public interest you go ahead to apply for a license which is non-exclusive and you cannot assign it it's only to be used in nigerian market and the copyright owner will also receive um his royalties taking into account the economic value of the work authorized to be used similarly again rights to withdraw consent were given then let's talk about licenses for broadcasting organization under section 33. So it's re broadcasting organization are required to apply um, to the Copyright Commission for a license to produce, publish for non-commercial purpose translation of a work um, as stated under 31, which talks about compulsory license for um, compulsory license to produce and publish translations um they are also required to um get a license for any text that has been incorporated in an audio visual or prepared or published for the sole purposes of um instructional activities and um Purpose of teaching, um, result of specialized technical or scientific research to the expert in a particular office. So that's about it for compulsory license. I think I'll just talk about the role of CMOs. If you've been following my short, short um, series, uh, I have also talked about that, but then I'll just touch on it in this podcast as well. So if you are a creative entrepreneur, you work in the creative space, um, you interact with creatives or 
um, you represent a creative, you render services to them. Have you ever considered telling them to interact with the collective management organizations who can act on their behalf, who also have their best interests at heart? So who are the CMOs? Um, they are... This, they are sometimes considered to be middlemen who have been set up for the purpose of not making profit, of not making profit first, um, representing the copyright owners, um, inclusive of performer, copyright owners and related right owners, um, help them negotiate and license and grant license to people that want to use their content or their works, um, collect and distribute royalties on their behalves, and, you know, in order for them to do this, they need to also get a license from the Copyright um, Commission. So, what are the types of CMOs that we have in Nigeria? First, I would like to make a mention of the Audiovisual Rights Society of Nigeria, which takes care of those in the movie industry. Um, so, if you've ever gotten a, a letter asking you to pay some sort of royalties because you have been um, publishing or communicating movies or showing movies within your facilities and these are the people in charge of this so make sure that at the beginning of every year you reach out to them to get the required license for you to actually publish um, or communicate those movies to your consumers or customers then you have the musical um, copyright Copyright Society of Nigeria, which is set to be the first CMO for the music industry um, as far back as 1989. Um, then there's Koson, but prior to this act, Koson's license was terminated. Koson represents songwriters, composers, publishers, performers, um, record labels, where MCSN uh, represents musical and sound recording Um Owner. So you, you kind of see like their roles are interplay. So maybe w they can at least merge. I don't know, guys. But you know, then you have Repron, Repro, Repro N I G. Re that's the reproduction um, rights organization who represents literary and artistic fields. Um, they manage reproduction rights, so you know you have right to reproduce. Most of all of the rights, all of the copyright works have the right to reproduce. They also grant license and distribute royalties to members who include the Association of Nigerians Auto, ANA. Um, then you have the Academic and Non-Fiction Authors Association of Nigeria, um, National Association for Translators. So we just recently talked about um um, compulsory license for to reproduce and publish translation so these are the people that so the sector that you'll be interfacing with is the repro repro nig um they have um, newspaper proprietor association uh, nigerian publishers association photographers association of nigerian society society of nigerian artists um basically their role concerned with reproduction right like i said there which includes secondary use of works through photocopying scanning electronic storage of um printed materials fiction and non-fiction books journal periodics magazines newspapers works of visual art photographs um camp programs you, al you also require um prior authorization which includes any using educational institution and research institutes and they also, also issue licenses to uh, photocopy shops, corporations, delivery services, education research centers, and they're also known to be affiliated with the International Federation of Reproduction Rights Organization, that is the IFRRO. Um, so one section that crossed, okay, um, that, I, that, I, that, that I saw and I thought, okay, might be related to the reprong, um, CMO is section 23. We basically talks about um, restriction on reprographic copying by educational 
um, institution, which states that where the copying of passages for public from published literary or musical works for educational institutions to be used for the purpose of instruction, it shall not infringe. It shall not infringe now. Um, and then the requirement is that you cannot do more than 5%. Um, you cannot copy more than 5%. Or if it's done on behalf of, or done on behalf of within the space, um, three months for the educational institution. And in the event where there's a licensing agreement, it shall not apply. If the license terms restricts you um, copying certain parts of the literary or uh, uh, musical works or whatever um, work in question um, you must do well to ab abide by it then exceptions found that uh, I found in section 21 which is that copyright in literary artistic works shall not be infringed if it's being copied in the course of instruction so I'm I'm going to teach students or I'm giving a webinar or something. Um, as long as is the copy is done by a person giving or receiving the instruction, um, and is not by means of a reprographic process, then copyright in sound recording, audiovisual broadcast, or cable program cannot be infringed if it's being copied in the course of instruction at a non-profit educational institution, um, in the course of preparing for your instruction, and that copy is done or used. By the instruction for the person giving or being received. Can anyone just wake up today and say, Oh, I want to create um, a CMO in Nigeria? No, you have to first of all um, apply to the. Okay, first, you have to be incorporated as a company limited by guarantee under section 20, sub one of the um, corporate, sorry, company and allied matters at 2020, which is usually formed for the promotion of um, commerce, art, science, um, religion, charity, or any other similar objective. So people that are critics who are coming together always have a similar objective of um, getting someone to act on their behalf, to negotiate licenses for them, to, um, you know, collect royalties on their behalf as well. So it could be a group of persons, or owners of copyright, um, copyright works basically, yeah. So, um, other than that, they apply for a license from the Nigerian Copyright Commission, who is basically an a regulatory and enforcement agency and has the power to grant them that license. Um, the objective will include that they have to grant license, collect royalties on behalf of the copyright owners, and distribute represent substantial amount of copyright owners in any category and must comply with the terms and conditions presented by the Nigerian Copyright Commission. So once they are sent or agreed to that, then they are agreed to go. Um, and anyone who goes against this, if you're an individual, you're liable um, to a fine of at least one million or imprisonment for a term of five years, or if a body corporate, a fine of at least five million naira. The commission I've already stated the roles of the commission, but let's talk about the role of a CMO. What are they required to do? So whether or not you are a member of a CMO, subsection 9 of 88 provides that a CMO may issue licenses permitting the use of works of owners of copyright who are not members, provided that such works are in the same category as work for which um, the license that the NCC gave to them is. Um, the owner of the copyright in such work and are not otherwise represented by any other CMO. Um, there is more than one CMO approved. There is not more than one CMO approved to operate in that particular category. Mm -hmm. And the owners of the copyright in such work have not written notice to the CMO to opt out of their collective management um, of their rights. And the CMO does not discriminate against such owners in terms of tariff from the use of their work and payment of royalties to such owners. And as just an aside, I want us to note things that are not eligible for copyright protection. They include that. So someone cannot say he owns an idea or procedure or process or format, system, method of operation, concept, principle, discovery, data. Um, you cannot own official text of a legislative or administrative 
nature or any translation of any sort you cannot own a state symbol or insignia which includes flags coat of arms and term banknote design i think we had a case but that was copyright related anyway the court and the naira um case I, I don't know how many of you remember it but just to include that and then i'm going to talk about um anonymous work i did see that i'm trying to get it to just hold on guys so when we talked about or when we we're talking about um comment duration of copyrights so for instance um literary work musical artistic works other than photographs last for 70 years after the end of the year in which the author dies um while works that are why works uh, made under the direction or control of a government or an agency of government or any prescribed international body last for 50 years after the end of the year in which the work was first made available to the public or 50 years after the work was created if it wasn't made available to the public within that time why audiovisual photographs 50 years after the end of the year in which the work was first made available to the public with the consent of the author so you see how the copyright act stresses on consent getting license getting permission so i want to see changes going forward um sound recording 50 years after the end of the year in which recording was first made available to the public with the consent of the author or 50 years after the work was created if not made available to the public within that time broadcast 50 years after the end of the year in which the first broadcast took place and then sub two of section 19 talks about copyrights in anonymous or pseudonymous literary musical or artistic work now when i saw this particular provision i was really excited for copyright owners because um, this is one of the new introductions that i think would give um people within this category some sort of potential so if you create literary work physical work or artistic works as an anonymous person or pseudonymous pseudonymous person um you enjoy 70 years after the year in which the work was first made available to the public with your consent or 70 years after if you did not make it available to the public within that time um that when you become you known the duration of the copyright shall be in accordance with you know all the other previous ones that i mentioned so so basically this category of persons are people that don't want their identity to be revealed um while pseudonymous okay so your identity will not be re released and then you also use pen names um to identify yourself as the author of the work in question or nickname as the case may be um international framework to take note of is the bank convention for the protection of literary and artistic works um uh, specifically article 7.3 of the bank convention states that in the case of anonymous or pseudonymous works the term of protection granted by the convention shall expire 50 years i think the nigerian copyright art is um a bit generous granting 70 years uh, whether with your consent or without your consent but the bank convention says um, 50 years after the work has been lawfully made available to the public however when the pseudonym pseudonym oh god apologies guys adopted by the author leaves no doubt as to his identity the term of protection shall be provided in paragraph one that is the life of the author and 50 years after his death, pseudonymy. However, in most countries, the author subsequently discloses identity after publication and then the normal term starts to read. Now, countries that have um, incorporated these laws are the United States, um, the United Kingdom grants 70 years if the author is unknown. Um, india as well you know so this is a welcome development and then in the event of a joint authorship work um reference to the death of the author shall be the shall be to the author who dies last so can a cmo uh, represent people with 
anonymous or pseudo work yes they can they are all considered to be copyright holders so um the role of a cmo basically would be to reduce transaction costs where the eligible work are exploited eligible work will include copyright and related rights and then it gives users access to the work legally um they basically act as admin head for copyright owners they possess a bundle of multi-territorial licenses um i think the license is also restricted because when the artists assign their rights to them to represent them it's not everything that they are permitted it's not everything that they are permitted to do then hmm. then um they can also sue on behalf of the copyright owner where their work was used without their consent permission authorization they can also monitor the use of the copyright works i think there's a recent case now um can't remember it but it, it came out this year where a, a cmo sued an airline so it's not a nigerian case by the way sued an airline um company for publishing um certain i think it was for movies not for songs i think i'm missing but yeah they sued on behalf of copyright owners and the court stated that that did not fall under their jurisdiction as they did not infringe on anybody's rights you know so the question now is are airlines supposed to um, what kind of licenses do airline operators get and where does the cmo right begins and end and the role of a copyright owner is to assign um an exclusive license to the cmo to help them monetize their bundle of exclusive or substantial bundle of exclusive rights we like they end up relying on the cmo to help them monitor the use of their work now has the C as this new ad cured setting issues that cmo experiences in nigeria um not necessarily but i think they are in the right step or right direction so waiting for the um collective my organization regulations that the um copyright commission would work on so yeah so i guess for me one thing that i sort of looked forward to was seeing if there was like a termination or reversion of um copyright as is provided under the u.s law where after 35 years if you are granted someone license to use your work you can always terminate but then there's room for improvement um you know protection of hyperlinks um I, i'm also happy that we now have like a new level of moral rights where copyright owner has the right to give the work um the title or leave it or dedicate it to someone as the case may be so but yeah that's it from me <laughs> that's it from me anyways <laughs> so in wrapping up uh, my assessment would be that this this um new act um i i would say it's a good one uh maybe in future the commission can create guidelines to deal with copyright issues in the digital age such as um originality of works created as a result of ai tech you know deal with issues as to um our works created by non-human um original do they meet the basic requirements of you know putting in effort being in a fixed medium and any other emerging um frontiers that we may come across maybe a proper definition of what is um originality um proper definition for infringement to include alleged uh who an alleged infringer is or threat of infringement and maybe um use of copyright notices statements disclaimers for fair dealing proceedings for yeah kudos to them i know this is going to be a long I think it's the longest I've ever done, but thank you to everyone who is currently listening to me.
so to wrap up again thank you everyone for listening to me um and i'll say see you in the next episode and look out for you know conversations on the new arts just to get better clarity on the provisions and yeah see you in the next episode bye guys